pastor is using oil, you guys are in the Hushta movement, not prayer movement. The prayer caravan is not prayer movement. I call it prayer madness because it is a Nehushtan movement. If you people realize what these your apostles are doing to you, you will, you will enter their house and beat them up on a, on, a, on a serious level. If you realize what they are doing to you, it's just that ignorance is helping them to prosper. Your stupidity is helping the apostles and the prophets and the archbishops to prosper in their error and their lies. Because you don't know. Any day you know, they are in trouble. And they don't want you to know. That's why they call us names so that you will not listen to us. Most churches that say they are in a move of God, they are actually in a Nehushtan movement. The Nehushtan movement is any supernatural manifestation or any religious movement that is anchored on the use of oil, water, salt, and all these things. It's Nehushtan movement. And they call it symbolic. They call it prophetic acts. It's a timeless ordinance. All scriptures are inspired by God. He removed the high places and broke the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden image. That is my ministry. That's what we are doing. That's what God is doing. Is doing. We are cutting down the wooden image. Breaking down the sacred pillars in the hearts of men. We are breaking those nonsense down. That's why they don't like us. We are breaking down the brazen serpent. We are stopping the Nehushtan movement in churches. We don't care what you call it. If you like, call us anything. The highest you can do is your mouth. You can't go beyond that. That is where you will stop. The, the move of God will continue. We will deal with the Nehushtan movement until it dies. In this, in this country, watch out. It is going to die completely. If you're a preacher, stop propagating the Nehushtan movement. Stop practicing the symbols of the Old Testament. Stop bringing demons to your members. God will judge you in the day of judgment. Today you are making money out of it. Or out of the altars they are raising. They are giving you millions. Don't worry. When you close your eyes in death, then you will face the owner of the church. He will deal with you. And so, people, you're welcome to this, um, do I call it a broadcast? Thank you very much and God bless you. I hope that this video meets you well. So, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are listening to me. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I saw this uh, quote. Uh, I think somebody actually used it as a profile picture. And uh, see, it makes a lot of sense. He says, I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. Harriet Tubman, 1820, March 9, 1913. So this person lived for close to 100 years. And this is a quote that is actually enmeshed in complete wisdom and the perfect knowledge. Now, the truth is that this is the absolute truth. We have a lot of people who go about gallivanting on the pages of um, social media, looking for who to attack, who to insult, who to, um, you know, use whatever means of defense they have for their masters, you know, in order to maybe get people out of the way to stop talking about their masters. You know why? They really don't know that they are slaves. They really don't know that they have been, they have been taken advantage of. And so because of that, they think that they are doing the right thing. And I remember that the Bible says that even a time will come when people will kill us. And when they kill us, they will think that they are doing God a favor. They will think that they are doing the services of God. And that is what we are seeing today. A lot of fake people that have taken over the pulpit for filthy lucre. And once you say anything against them, you are in trouble. But then you... you you only get to marvel when tomorrow you see that same person who was singing the praises of this false monster, this monster, this false prophet, coming out to sing a song in a different tune. And so, um, Apostle Takin, he is like a rough diamond. You know, many people misunderstand him and many people understand him. And there is a way to balance what you hear. You know, you balance the message you hear from the spirit of what the person is trying to communicate. Now, listen, you, you may not understand what he means by Nehushtan movement. There was that, um, you know, the serpent that God commanded Moses to build 
when the children of Israel offended the murmured against God, you know, they sinned against God in the wilderness, and the Lord decided to punish them. And so he sent a, a very fiery serpent in the camp, and the serpent, the serpent uh, destroyed, I think. All right, so the Lord, in, the, in his uh, fury, released this serpent, and the serpent began to bite and to kill Anybody that was beaten would die. And when they cried unto God, God instructed Moses, okay, I've heard their cry again, and I'm going to do something. The Lord told Moses what to do, and he commanded Moses to make a bronze serpent, and the bronze serpent was to be hung on a tree. you know. And anybody that was beaten by the serpent before time, and even if he was at the point of death, if that person should look, you know, on the bronze serpent on the tree, they will leave. And many people did it and they lived. And you see, we have that song that we sing. Look and leave, oh brother, leave. Look to Jesus now and leave. It is recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and leave so when a time passed there was a, a sect that began to worship that bronze you know snake now if you understand what that bronze snake meant when jesus the lord came he said just as moses lifted up serpents in the wilderness if the son of man shall be lifted up he shall draw all men unto himself and how would they be drawn by looking unto him people looked so the you know bronze happened and they got saved. And so we are we are you know we are living in anti-type today because the type the type was the, the serpent that was hung on a tree. Now here today we have we have Jesus who has come to you know um replace that that um you know that the bronze serpent represented. So here you have you have the bronze snake. This is the bronze snake on a tree, on a wooden cross. And from here, we move to this place. Once we left here, there is no, once we left here and, and we have come to this place, there is no need, no need anymore, no need anymore for this one here. I mean, once we have we left this place and we have crossed over to this place, we don't have the need to recognize this again now that is telling you about types symbols anti-type and the real thing the substance jesus is the substance and so we don't we don't stay here we move from here we move from here to here this is where we are now this is where we should be the cross of christ now when people are using certain methods bringing uh, some kind of practices that looks like that of which doctors because you see the problem with all these things these material things that are uh, that, that have been introduced into the uh into the church is that number one it waters down the faith of the people it makes the people to look up to substance instead of i mean in uh to, to look up to the shadow instead of the substance it makes the people to look at uh, you know to hope in the type instead of the anti-type now jesus has come and he has taken away any other thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of god and so we are in the present day of reality we are handling the substance now and jesus is the substance jesus is the reality jesus is the anti-type jesus is the main thing you know it when people will wake up in the morning they will not pray and they remember that they have an oil that will protect them purportedly and so they pour oil and they go out when people have a business appointment, instead of trusting and relying in God, that will give them favor when they go. Now, they drink the oil because they've been told that that is due, as I say. Now, that is an idolatry in, in uh, this, guys. So, I will let you watch the video. I'm actually doing this, you know, because of the majority of those that don't know that they are slaves. And I believe that at least one person will understand sooner or later understand i'd like you to enjoy the video to the fullest let me know what you think about the video and uh, from me to you i want to say god bless you
I want to tell you that I appreciate you. And I want to ask you, please, don't forget to subscribe to my um, sister channel, my backup channel. The end is nearer television. The link to that channel is right under the description area of this video. I'll be seeing you very soon in the next video. Until then, from me to you, brother, sister, shalom. Your apostles are taking you back to the Old Testament. And whenever you sit on the preacher, we'll take you back to the Old Testament. You will experience the demonic. Nehushtan will become your personal assistant. Nehushtan will come to your life. You will experience an unclean spirit that will be living with you, tormenting your life in dreams and visions. And some of you that will call them your spirit husband. Others, you cannot have rest. And they will call them all kinds of things. They will say, it's an, it's a, your, the, your ancestors. Your ancestors are the ones causes in your father's house. Evil pattern. Evil deeds. Causes. They will be blaming it on things that are not true. And making you fast, reckless and stupid fastings. Giving them money while you are fasting. Giving them money while you are fasting. Your stupidity. They serve you on holy, holy communion. Wash your feet and do all this nonsense. That's why I say every feet washing is brain washing. They wash your feet to wash your brain. The Bible says they did not receive the promise. Look at verse 40. God having provided something better for us. Glory. Reality of the substance. They walked in shadows. We are to walk in realities. That's what the Bible says. Something better for us. So if you are still using Holy Spirit oil as a symbol of the Holy Ghost, you are still in the Old Testament and you are bringing demons to your life. You are bringing demons to the church if you are a pastor. God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So we are their perfection. We are their perfection. Look at, look, look at the mystery. They died under, the, under the, the symbolic expressions of God and they never made heaven except, except uh, Elijah, Moses, and Enoch. They were in hate and Jesus went there and liberated them. It was when they came out of the grave with Jesus on the day that Jesus resurrected, because the Bible says many holy men were seen in Jerusalem. It was when they came out of the grave of Jesus that they stepped into the reality of the symbols that they had been expressing. So they stepped into that, re that reality after they came out of the grave on the, in the day of resurrection. Why? Why? Because then the, Jesus had died on the cross. His blood had been shed. They were now redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The Bible said the blood of goods could not redeem them. It could only atone. But they were now redeemed by the blood. Now that they were redeemed, they stepped into the reality of the symbols they were expressing before. But the point is this. When they step into the reality, they step into that realm of glory where the reality is this. And they step into heaven completely, into paradise completely. So we are to experience what they step into after coming out of the grave while we are still alive on it. The reason why Christ is weeping is that many of us pastors are preventing you from experiencing that glory by giving you oil, giving you salt, asking you to raise altars, keeping you in the Old Testament. So we are preventing you from entering into the better thing that was preserved for us. Entering into what our fathers entered when they came out of the grave. We are to enter into the world alive. And the first guys to step into it were the 120 in the upper room. I don't know how you understand me tonight. They were the first to step into it. We are laying foundation for the things that we are going to teach. They were the first to step into the reality. And we are the next to step into it. Personally, the demonstration of the spirit and the power of God by my hands increased when I dropped the oil. Radical transformation of moral nature increased when I dropped the oil. That is a little foretaste of the reality. And I'm still pressing for more. Are you understanding me? To come more into the reality. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. We are days where the glory is building our lives. We are days where the symbolic expressions of God are no longer needed. 
And look at what is happening. I mentioned Nehushtan earlier. And I need to show you in the Bible. For some of you that I have not shown you before. Go to the book of 2 Kings. Chapter 18. Let's see Nehushtan. Second Kings chapter 18. The Bible says, Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, the son of Ella, king of Israel. Second Kings 18. That Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king. And he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His modern, mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Zachariah. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. According to all that his father David had done. I wish this is taking me to something else. Look at verse 4. He removed the high places and broke the sacred pillars. Sorry, and broke the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden image. That is my ministry. That's what we are doing. That's what Crown of Spirit is doing. We are cutting down the wooden image. Breaking down the sacred pillars in the hearts of men that have been constructed by the use of oil, the use of salt, the use of water to pray, the use of candle, the use of witchcraft gadget, incense. We are breaking those nonsense down. That's why they don't like us. Listen, he said, cut down the wooden image and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, the children of Israel burned incense to it and calls, calls it Nehushtan. So if your pastor is using oil, you guys are in Nehushtan movement, not prayer movement. The prayer caravan is not prayer movement. I call it prayer madness because it is a Nehushtan movement. The sacred pillar that Moses raised is Moses made one mistake. He did not break it down when they left that place. The sacred pillar he raised, why did he raise it? Simple. Israel sinned against God and God released snakes as a symbol because God was speaking in symbols. It is called signs and wonders. He was speaking in symbols. Even the prophetic ministry in the Old Testament was, was symbolic. That's how you see when prophets want to prophesy, they have to use what they call prophetic acts. They have to use symbols to prophesy. That is prophetic ministry in the Old Testament. But in the New, we don't use symbols to prophesy. Don't worry, when I begin to show you what are prophetic acts and what are ordinances, you, you understand that. Now, now listen carefully. Moses, because God was expressing himself symbolically, he told Moses to make a brazen serpent. And that everybody who is beaten by the snake will look at the serpent. Sorry, will look at the brazen serpent. Will be healed. Now, the Bible explained the Bible. The symbolic expression of God in the brazen serpent. What does it mean? So Jesus came in the book of Matthew or John. What did he say? Go to John chapter 3. Let the book of John, let what Jesus say in John, help us understand this. John chapter 3, verse, let me begin with verse 12. John 3, 12. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Listen, each time I read this scripture, I begin to ask God, Father, what are the heavenly things? You see the church today. A lot of things you hear in church are demonic things. They are not even <laughs> heavenly things. Okay. No one has ascended to heaven. But he who came down from heaven. That is the son of man who is in heaven. You now ask yourself, ah, Father. You say no one has ascended into heaven. But the Bible says that Enoch. <laughs> where we go and was not. For God took him. Where did he go? The Bible says that Elijah. Was taken by the chariots of fire to heaven. Where did he go? The Bible says Moses was buried by God. Of course, he was taken to heaven. Where did he go? And Jesus said, nobody has entered heaven. Those are mysteries. That is the real mystery of the kingdom. Not the pouring of oil in places. Those are not mysteries. Those are mistakes. Your apostles call mistakes mysteries.
the book of Oyedepo that I read, The Mystery of the Anointing Oil, eh, eh, that book is supposed to be titled The Mistake of the Anointing Oil, not the mystery. Not the mystery. What many preachers call mysteries today are mistakes. They read their greed into God's creed and created a doctrine. They are mistakes. They are not mysteries. The real mystery is what I've just mentioned. Yesterday I spoke about the seasons of God and we saw the real seasons of God. The real mysteries, the word mystery means hidden truth. That's what it means. Hidden truth. So the, what, the, the hidden truth in the seven feasts of the Lord, we just had a foretaste of it yesterday during the national the international broadcast so 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 the mystery is jesus the, what is the hidden truth there when jesus said nobody have gone to heaven and we know people like elijah people like so where did they go that's why i tell you there's a realm in the glory we are men like elijah and moses are still parading the earth the bible says they are the two olive trees that stand beside the lord the god of the whole earth and they are the people that will descend as the two witness, not your brother here in Kenya. There will be the two witness that are coming after the rapture because their job is not yet over. That's why Jesus said, Nobody have gone to heaven. Enoch, where did he go to? Wait for another day. Woo! Because the Enoch generation is rising. Enoch wants to fulfill his own assignment. He has not fulfilled his own assignment. There's a generation that will not see death. That generation will be born shortly after the rapture. Sometimes I begin to feel that we may be the generation that I don't know. But with the way things are happening, I don't think we are the generation. But there's a generation that will not see death. And that generation, when it begins to emerge on earth, Enoch will be activated. Because he represents a template. He is the servant from Adam. And that generation that will not see God will step into the seventh day of God. Enoch will be activated. Just as Moses and Elijah will be activated after the rapture. That's why Jesus said, nobody have gone there. <laughs> nobody have gone there, sir. So let's go forward. He said in verse 14, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Sorry, have eternal life. Now, now, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Listen carefully. So, what is the meaning of the symbolic expression of the brazen serpent in the wilderness? When God told Moses to make the brazen serpent, let the people look at it. Israel is a template of the lost world then. They are a missionary nation. They are a missionary nation. Now, God was telling us, our own generation, because those things was hidden for us, that there's going to be a cross, and that cross, God will hang on that cross. But God will hang on that cross as sin, because the serpent is a symbol of sin. It's also a symbol of Satan. So Jesus will hang on the cross as sin. The book of Psalms said he became sin for us, not sinner. He, he knew no sin because it takes a righteous man to die for the wicked. So Jesus hung on that cross as sin. The serpent is a symbolic of so many things in the realm of the spirit. One of it is a symbolic of sin. And another one is a symbolic of a curse. That's why the book of Galatians says Jesus became a curse for us because a serpent it's a symbol of a curse. A curse and as in C-U-R-O-S-E. C-U-R-O-S-E. So Jesus became a C-U-R-O-S-E for us by hanging on the cross so that the blessing of Abraham, which is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, which is the reality of the symbolic expression of God as oil, we may receive that reality. In another words, Jesus became a cause for us so that we we'll no longer walk in the symbols of the Old Testament, but we walk in the reality of the new. The reality is in God's glory. So that we we'll no longer walk in the symbolic expressions of God, we will walk in the reality of God. That is why Czech Christians, whose pastors are leading them to walk in the symbolic expression, oil, water, salt, candle, they are always breaking curses. Because when you go back to the symbolic, you kiss the curse. 
you deny yourself the blessing of Jesus dying on the cross. Okay, look at it. Do you know that genuine salvation alone should del deliver you from the causes of your father's house? Genuine salvation. I'm not saying prayer. You meeting Jesus is enough for you to be free from the causes of your father's house. You don't break them again. You know why? Because genuine salvation is a translation from your father's house to the household of God. That, as a result, whatever is happening in your father's house should not flow to you. But look at people who call themselves Christians. They are always uh, altars in my father's house. Causes in my father's house. And you see them walking in their lives. Because of what? They deny Jesus the opportunity to put the blessing of redemption in their life by going back to the shadows. By going back to the symbolic expressions of God of the altar. Oh, we are using olive oil because it's a symbol of the Holy Ghost. You have denied yourself the blessing of redemption. If you people realize what these your apostles are doing to you, you will, you will enter their house and beat them up on a, on a, on a serious note. If you realize what they are doing to you, it's just that ignorance is helping them to prosper. Your stupidity is helping the apostles and the prophets and the archbishops to prosper in their error and their lies. Because you don't know. Any day you know, they are in trouble. And they don't want you to know. That's why they call us names so that you will not listen to us. They call us all kinds of names so that you will not, because they know if you listen to us only one month, you are delivered from the madness that they, 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 they have inflicted you with. You are delivered from it. Jesus will set you free. You will meet the true Lord. And you no longer need to break altars. You no longer need to pray that you'll be delivered from the causes of your father's house. Salvation alone is enough. And like I told you yesterday, salvation is the Passover time and season of God being fulfilled in your life and we look at the god of times and seasons so the time and season called passover if it is fulfilled in your life the bible says the reproach of egypt which is the cause of your father's house and what they call the altars and every nonsense they will be rolled away from you not by prayer by your commitment to christ renunciation of the sinner's life and commitment to christ that is all will deliver you from there for what they call altars of your father's house and causes it to deliver you because salvation takes you away from your father's house and plants you in the household of faith when you begin to enjoy what the bible called the commonwealth of israel commonwealth of zion many people don't enjoy the commonwealth of zion which involves peace shalom deliverance without going to deliverance process many christians don't have it because their pastors their papas and their bishops their archbishop and their prophets have kept them under symbolism. Have kept them with Nehushtan. The Nehushtan spirit. So most churches that say they are in a move of God, they are actually in a Nehushtan movement. They are actually in a Nehushtan. So I call it the prayer caravan. I call it prayer madness because it was a Nehushtan movement. All the people you thought gave their life to Christ, go and check them in the next five years. Where are the fruit? All this game we play. We play so much game in the church today. We don't realize the eternal consequence of this nonsense that we are doing. And when God in his mercy raised people to cry, to, to deliver us from our madness, we call them names. Look at, Moses made one mistake. He didn't break down the pillar. What he's supposed to have done was to break down the pillar because God has moved. Now, because he didn't break it down, Israel moved forward, settled in the, in, the, in the land of Canaan, and in the generation, years later, they traced the pillar back. And they began to burn incense to it, and they call it Nehushtan. Do you know that today, if a pastor construct a pool, a pole, and, and mold a brazen serpent, and put it in the church and point people to second kings people will go and pray to it and, and burn incense to it because one they'll be getting miracles without knowing that it's a demon of deliverance that, that, that is working through it I want, to, I want you to check something study that thing that bishops carry the rod the day they are ordained that thing they give them study it most of those things you see the symbol of a snake on the, on the head 
without even knowing that is a snake. Some of you, you see the symbols of cross, you see other symbols. And most of those bishops are involved in rituals. That's how all those ordination, they pour oil on your, on your head. It's condemnation. It's destruction. That's how you see Jesus never did that nonsense. Do you see Jesus gather all the apostles and, and pour oil on their head? He sent them to the upper room. If there's anybody that should have poured oil on the apostles to ordain them into ministry, it's Jesus. Because he was the one that told Moses to do the oil. Don't worry, we'll see this week. It's Jesus. So he would have called the 12 apostles and said, Peter, James, and John, it's time for me to ordain you into ministry. You know, I'm, 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 I'm dying. And he poured the oil. Or when he resurrected, he would have called them and pour oil on, and anoint them with oil and say, now go into ministry. He did not. He sent them to the upper room to receive the re-anointing oil, which is the Holy Spirit. To receive the replacement for the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit. He sent them to the upper room to receive it. He never anointed them with oil. Some of you, you are stuck in Mark, Mark chapter 6, verse 12 and 13, that, that the apostles carry olive oil. You are stuck in James chapter 5, verse 14, and you are stuck there. You, you are using those two scriptures to tap into the demon of deliverance. You are using those two scriptures to, to bring yourself back to Nehushtan. To engage in the Hushtan movement that you are calling prayer movement. Look at how demons have entered so many churches today. And yet the pastors do not see. Sometimes the members see. God opened their eyes to see. There was, there was somebody who sent a message to me today. That one of these, your uh, papas, she saw in a vision where the papa brought. He was preaching and carried, so, is this somebody brought a snake or he, he carried a snake? And the nun said, this is also a creature of God and dropped the snake in the church. You see, you cannot see such visions and remain in that church if you are wise. Many pastors have bring the demonic into the church through the Nehushtan movement. The Nehushtan movement is any supernatural demonstration that is anchored on a deliverance invention. I repeat, the Nehushtan movement is any supernatural manifestation or any religious movement that is anchored on the use of oil, water, salt, and all these things. It's Nehushtan movement. And they call it symbolic. They call it prophetic acts. But it's Nehushtan movement. So let's assume Israel, when they're going to burn incense to the, to the brazen serpent. Incense means prayer. They go there to pray. You ask them, why are you praying to, the, to, to this serpent? The serpent, sorry, to the brazen serpent. You ought not to pray for the, they will say, no, it's a prophetic act. They said, no, the brazen serpent is helping me to connect Jesus. Eh? That is small screen. No, it, it's a prophetic act. It's a timeless ordinance. It's a timeless, because it is in the Bible, all scriptures are inspired by God. So it's a timeless ordinance. So let's assume a, a, a smart prophet come and construct this brazen serpent on a pole and put in the church. People will go and pray and raise altars. And so sit towards it because it's giving them miracles. Not only that they are dealing with the demon. And when you now ask them, when people like us come and preach against it, they will say, we are attacking other pastors. Why are you attacking other churches? That's what they'll be saying. It's a prophetic act. It's a timeless ordinance. Because it's in the Bible. So all scriptures are inspired by God. But they will not add, inspired for what? For doctrine for correction, for reproof, so that we don't go back to Nehushtan. They are inspired so that we not go back to Nehushtan movement and call it Christianity. Now, they constructed the, the brazen serpent. They call it Nehushtan. And there was a result. But because the season for that serpent, brazen serpent was over. A king arose. That was even before the cross. A king arose to break it down. And God said, you have done the right thing. That's what we are doing. We are breaking down the brazen serpent. We are stopping the Nehushtan movement in churches. We don't care what you call it. If you like, call us anything. The highest you can do is your mouth. You can't go beyond that. Because we know what is protecting us. You can't go be beyond that. You will, that is where you will stop. The, the move of God will continue. We will deal with the Nehushtan movement until it dies. In this, in this country, watch out. It's going to die completely. 
We will stop that Nehushtan movement. You are calling deliverance. God is here to stop it. God is here to stop that movement. Are you understanding me? Listen carefully. Listen carefully. This king arose and broke down the, the, the brazen serpent. It's a template that a generation is rising right now that is breaking down this nonsense. Now, the brazen serpent here represents all symbolic expressions of God in the Old Testament. Because when Moses molded it, the people look at it and they were, they were, they were cured of the venom. The snake that beat them also represent sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is dead. The Bible says the sting of sin, the venom of sin. A lot of people on earth, they are sick with the venom of sin. So when we look at the cross of Jesus and we tap into the reality of his death on the cross, we are delivered from the power and the practice of sin. It is called grace. Grace delivered from the penalty, the practice, and the presence of sin. So that is the meaning of the brazen serpent. So the brazen serpent under Moses was a symbolic expression of the redemption of the whole world. So it's not something you construct, but sadly speaking, many people you call bishop are giving that brazen serpent in that, you know that thing the bishop holds, I don't know, I, I've forgotten the name now. What they hold like this, that looks like a, a, a rod, Coming like this with their cap, the car they wear, some of them are red, they come like this with it like this. Ordination. Any day they are wearing their regalia as bishop, this, they hold it. That is most of those things. Some of them are brazen serpent of today. Most of them. Not all. Some of them have the shape of, of the brazen serpent. Look at it. You will see the, the thing will bend like this. The face of a snake will bend like this in the front. And Mumu will not know. You see, the, you see somebody hold that kind of thing in the church and you are sitting there with your Bible. You are stupid. They have stolen your brain. That's how when the demonic they are spreading come upon you. It destroys you. Them, they are still alive. Them, they are still alive. Listen, any church that is engaged in the Houston movement is not a good place for you to sit. If you like, listen. If you like, don't listen. Any church engaged in the Houston movement is not a good place to sit. You may not see the repercussion now, but it's coming. If you're a preacher, stop propagating the Nehushtan movement. Stop practicing the symbols of the Old Testament. Stop bringing demons to your members. God will judge you in the day of judgment. Today you are making money out of it. Or out of the altars they are raising. They are giving you millions. Don't worry. When you close your eyes in death, then you will face the owner of the church. He will deal with you. Some of you, he will not wait until you die. He will meet you on earth and deal with you. Because you are turning his ship. You are destroying his church and thinking that you are establishing it. Look at how many souls have been wasted through this Nehushtan movement. Some, the movement is expressing the use of oil, the use of salt, the killing of animals in the name of sacrifice. Some are even told to bring uh, all kinds of as fine produce. Some are told to redeem themselves because they are firstborn. All these things are Nehushtan movements. They are all Nehushtan movements. So, they burn incense to it and they call it Nehushtan. That's what they did. And that's what God has raised some voices to pull down today. You can't stop it all. No, you can't. Because it's a move of God to pull down the brazen serpent. Jesus came to fulfill it. So what, the, what Christ has fulfilled should not be symbolized. What Christ has fulfilled when you get to the, the realm of glory, you begin to understand that what Christ has fulfilled should not be symbolized. What Christ has fulfilled, you must step into its reality. He has fulfilled the use of oil. So step into the reality of the oil, which is the Holy Ghost. He has fulfilled the use of candle. Step into the reality, which you, and you become the candle of, of God. You see the flame of fire fell upon the apostles the day of Pentecost. The, the Bible says, Tongues of fire. Is that not what you see in the head of a candle? Is that not what you see? Look at the candle. Look at the candle. 
Is that not what you see? Flame. That's what you see in the head of, 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 a, of a candle. So when the Holy Ghost come upon you, he kindled your life with the flame, you become the candle of, of God on it. So you step into the reality instead of using candles to pray. So when you use candles to pray and call it prophetic acts or call it timeless, ordina timeless ordinances, you are, you are engaged in a Nehushtan movement that will usher in the demonic to your life you are resisting Christ and preventing the blessings of redemption from speaking in your life. Teachings like these are not meant for everybody anyway. They are actually sent to everybody, but not everybody will accept them. Because a lot of people have been established in error. And those errors are prospering them. Most of what is bringing the demonic today is in the church. Listen. Oh God, most of what is bringing the demonic today is in the church. Everything, our present day apostles, prophets, bishops, archbishops are calling prophetic acts and timeless ordinances are all product of the Nehushtan movement. It is them going back to Moses to pick what he did. I'm bringing it to our days. Some don't even go to Moses, they go to demons. Because for instance, Moses never put oil on the street. Moses never gave anybody oil to drink. Moses never asked people to anoint oil on their leaves. Moses never did those things. So our generation have even gone beyond, and they call it prophetic acts. 